It's the political brown kid here, and I'm confused. <laughs> Literally, I'm confused. I'm confused for this reason. Number one, I've done all kind of videos. I do various types of videos. I'm trying not to be in one category. Um, I've done videos on, of course, male-female relationships. Those videos seem to do pretty decent because every male or people want to hear about relationships, I guess. And that seems to be the hot thing to do on the video on the internet nowadays is talk about men, women, and we hating on each other. Those videos do fine. I, if, if I mention a rapper's name, if I plug a rapper's name in and do a video on a particular rapper or on rap, those videos do fine. They shoot through the roof, thousands of views in one or two days. As soon as I start dropping knowledge, if I start talking about interracial relationships and why that's not good for black people, Oh, those views, it gets one or two hits. People don't want to hear it because they want to steal because black man and a black woman are so in love with being with non-black people. Those videos don't do anything. And everybody wants to talk and hit the um the don't like button, whatever you want to call it, the thumbs down button. And then they want to talk about love is love. and They don't care. But, but all this talk on the internet about black people not wanting to date each other and all of the hype around blackness, and hating on each other, they don't see how this all ties in because they have a narrow-minded view. So I did a video just a few days ago on Killer Mike and his appearance on the Bill Maher show on February the 3rd. I think that was February the 3rd or February 2nd. It was a Friday, the first Friday in February. And obviously people are up in arms at me. They're not up in arms at Killer Mike. They're up in arms at me. So let me just say this. Number one, I never said I hated Killer Mike. People always take, this is the thing that I that I hate about people. People just assume that just because somebody's a nice person, and that even goes for me, that, that, you know, just because you have one mistake and somebody criticizes one moment in time that you've done, that you are a hater of that person. I actually like Killer Mike. I've said it before, like when you see Killer Mike on Math Hoffa, when you see Killer Mike, even when he goes on the Bill Maher platform, and when, when he used to be a frequent guest on there, it, you know, he talks, you can tell that he has a grasp on black history, um, socioeconomic issues. Um, you can see that he is a very intelligent guy. I will say that, but I'm not going to condone a black person or any black this, black people, because this is what black people love to do, particularly black rappers. And, and it just ticks me off to no avail. Why do we want to normalize the N word? You don't see Jews going on shows talking about, hey, H word, you know, the H word. If you don't know the H word, go look it up. Jesse Jackson said it and got in so much trouble for it, saying it in the 80s when he was running for president. Go look up the K-word for Jews. They don't walk around using racial epithets and, and embracing them the way we have. Now, once again, we have had a different history with our racial epithets because our racism was a lot more systemic than what these other races have gone through. So I will say that. So I understand the psychology of why we use the N-word. But what I'm trying to say is, is it's at some point in time, you have to get out of that habit, and particularly too, because even even President Obama admitted, yeah, I used the N word, and if you don't believe me when he said that, go look it up. I'm pretty sure every black person, I'm pretty sure Desmond Tutu probably used it, but then again, over in Africa, the N word probably isn't that. You know, they probably use the words associated with whatever derogatory terms are thrown at them in Africa. I forget that term at the present time, but what I'm saying is this. But you don't see Barack Obama going on television, talking to a bunch of white people, using the N-word, just like it's a regular word that should be used in society. Normally, a lot of times, and, and even I use the N-word sometimes, I try not to, but sometimes when we talk as black folks and you get heated, you say those words, but you say them in the comforts of your own group. You don't go around a bunch of white people and start talking Hey, N word this, M, and just throwing around the N word like you, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor does it, but Richard Pryor, let's be honest, he was ignorant. 
You know, and I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but he, let's just be honest, he was ignorant. People who do that don't have common sense for the most part. You, you don't have a good grasp on yourself. And so when you see Killer Mike, who talks so eloquently when he talks, period about whatever subject, but, but, but I'm saying when he talks about the history of black people, when he talks about socioeconomic issues affecting black people, he talks very well. But when you see him get up on a show with Bill Maher, and then as soon as it, he just starts talking, using the N-word like it's, like it's just nothing, like he's talking to another black person, I have a problem with that. And obviously the people in my comment section don't see it as a problem. They want to point out all of what I'm doing and what I'm talking about. I even had one idiot talk to me, talk about it and leave a comment in the comment section saying if if Bill, uh, if Bill um, Killer Mike had said that he was going to vote um, for Biden or, or, or that I wouldn't have made the video. What the heck does that have to do with anything, number one? And like, what are you trying to insinuate that I'm a Biden supporter? I'm tr I'm trying to find. Obviously, these fools don't. The people who are responding negatively in my feed have not watched any other video but that one. They stumbled upon it. They haven't gone through my history catalog and said these are his views because I've talked about my views on Biden. I've talked about my views on a lot of politicians. So I don't even know what that person was talking about. The other thing people want to talk about is, you know, um, you know, that we should be going to the Grammys because I made a comment about Killer Mike, you know, being happy that he's nominated for three Grammys. And here's the thing. See, a lot of you people are too young to probably remember, but I guess maybe by me being in my 40s, I understand the history of the Grammys. The Grammys didn't even accept um, rap music back in the day. They didn't even accept it. They, and black people, and here's the problem that I have with black people. Once again, and somebody else also had a problem because I said I understood why white people enslaved black people. Somebody had a problem with me saying that. And I'll stand by that comment. You know why? Because when I continually see black people trying to fight, I don't understand why black people put so much effort into fighting, into getting into white spaces, but we don't fight for the betterment of our own stuff. What I mean by that is this. You have black people fighting hard. I want a Grammy. Why can't we be at the Grammys? The rappers fought hard. They kept y'all out of the Grammys for years. And then they finally let rappers in. They gave the first Grammy to Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. He won that over, I'm pretty sure, Rakim and won that over a lot of other people more talented, but they were the safe bet to give a Grammy to. But we can talk about that because we all know that a lot of these Grammys are bull crap. Kendrick Lamar lost, what, about probably about 10 years ago because they gave it to the white guy who made a, um, I forgot the white guy's name, but he made a song about how, you know, he felt, you know, he was conflicted with his homosexuality or sexuality. You know, he made a song. He was making, I don't think about, it was about him, but he just made a song about a person conflicted with their sexuality. So they gave them the Grammy. And so there was literally a black commentator that got on TV and said that we need to make better music. And I was just wondering, I was like, well, Kendrick Lamar does very good socioeconomic music. But because the LGBTQ is the hot topic to talk about, they gave it to him. His music is not better than Kendrick. So my thing is, you're fighting to get into a white space with white people that are sitting on a panel that don't know anything about hip hop that are determining who wins best rap album and who wins what type of albums. And then when you get there, you complain, you complain, you complain for years. First, you complain for years about let us into the Grammys. You fought hard for that and put a lot of time and energy into getting into the Grammys. Then you go to the Grammys. Then you're mad because they're not giving the Grammys to the proper people. And you don't know why? Because it's a whole bunch of white people judging our category. They're not us. And so you spend all this time and effort, and at the same time, where's the Source Awards at? Why haven't y'all said, let's build the Source Awards up into being this preeminent space for us? Let's build up the, the Soul Train Awards to be this preeminent space for us. You don't even see a lot of these artists attend these events anymore. I, I kid you not, and this is this is the real truth. Um... 
Beyonce has a habit, and I know I'm about to get some haters now because I'm about to talk about Beyonce. Beyonce has a habit of when it comes to, I think it's the Soul Train Awards or it's one of the Black Essence Music Awards. It's one of these award shows. She has a habit of coming in to accept her Grammy. She shows up right when she's going to get accepted and then she leaves. She doesn't stay for her show. She doesn't sit there in the front row and sit there and stay for the Grammy shows. She comes there, she accepts her award and she leaves. Or she comes there and she performs and she leaves. Jay-Z doesn't show up because his wife doesn't show up. A lot of these preeminent people, they don't come to these black awards. But for the Grammys, they'll stay there all day long. Y'all know the Grammys is probably about a 12, 13 hour show and they only show y'all two hours on television. The Grammys is an all day thing. And so what I'm saying is, how come we don't fight to say, let's get our awards to the standards that they're as elegant as these? And these are the same people, and I just mentioned it in the comments section, these are the same people that don't care that Jackie Robinson left. Because the guy made a comment to say, his comment was, well, the reason why we go to the Grammys, or the reason why Killer Mike goes to the Grammys is because it validates him. These are his words. I'm paraphrasing, but these are his words. You can go look it up in the, in the Killer Mike video, um, the Killer Mike um, commentary that I did. He said the reason why Killer Mike goes to these things is because it validates him and allows him to bargain for more money. This is what I'm talking about with black people. They're always trying to bargain with the white man to get paid instead of saying we can build stuff ourselves. They're the same people that will say to you, well, it was good that Deion Sanders left that black, black ass school, Jackson State, because he can get more money and he can do more things and he can get more money. How much more money does Deion Sanders need? Let's be let's keep it real. Deion Sanders probably has already maybe 50 million dollars. Out, even without even coaching. So so what, what does he need? 55 million? 59 million more? Like how much more does money does Deion Sanders need? Deion Sanders is already in a place of wealth. So he should be saying, you know what? If I stay at Jackson State University, you know how many more top-notch black recruits like the Caleb Williams, the CJ Strouds, all of these people of the world will come to these institutions in play. They'll go to the HBCUs and then the HBCUs will get on television. We will become the ones playing in the big time bowls. And these other schools that were once powerhouses, they will become the secondary um, thought of, um, thought after schools. They will just, they won't become the powerhouses. And therefore we can get more money to build bigger um, facilities for our HBCUs. We can build libraries. We can build better gym facilities. We can build better housing. We can have better campuses. But y'all don't look at it like that. Y'all look at it like, well, Deion Sanders is getting paid. He's already paid. So why do you want to, do you want to continue to nourish one tree or do you want to help all of the trees in the forest? And you guys are so narrow-minded. You guys are the same ones probably glad that Jackie Robinson, quote unquote, broke the color barrier. There was nothing great about what Jackie Robinson did. He, his successes, his personal achievements were great. It was great. If you want to look at the stats and you want to look at that. But what he did was basically destroy the Negro Leagues. Him. I, I, you know, I, I don't know about all the other players that left, but once these players start leaving, no black institution still stands. I keep telling y'all that integration destroyed the black community. People don't realize that I'm going to do a video on integration, but I'll mention it here and I'm going to re-mention it back in the other video. People don't realize that there was a black carnival or a black theme park that was in the D.C. metropolitan area. I forgot the name of it, but you can Google it. Um, it was, I don't know, it was called Fun World or it was called something, but they built it in the 1940s or 30s or somewhere around that time because of segregation. And they built it and it was where black people went. They had carnivals, they had they had all rides, they had all of this stuff. But as soon as integration came about, black people will always run to the shinier, better toy as opposed to saying, let's build up our toy. And they don't do they don't build up their stuff. They want something that's already built. 
So the Grammys don't need us. Your grant, the, the, Mike, Killer Mike being validated by the Grammys to get more money. Killer Mike is already set. Number one, Killer Mike's career is, it's not going any higher on any higher trajectory. He's, he is where he is. Killer Mike's been in the game since I was young. He's around my age. Me and Killer Mike are in our 40s. He's, he's around my age. And I'm not trying to say that Killer Mike you know, can't grow, but I, it's highly probable that his earning potential is already where it is. So the thing that kills, so why is it that he should be bargaining for more money? If, it, if you even guys even pay attention to the music industry and the publishing industry lately, anybody can publish something online. It, it, I mean, so so the thing is, is that who's benefits more? Does does um the Grammys benefit more? I think the Grammys benefit more. You get to have iced tea. Ice Cube, I'm sorry, now they're getting in on the 50th anniversary of hip-hop, inviting and inducting all of these rappers, NWA wants to show up, y'all supposed to be the most militant Negroes on planet Earth, and y'all at the Grammys? Y'all at the Grammys? Come on, I'm, I'm really disappointed in Ice Cube. The thing is, is that they get the validation because now it validates them as being this non-racist institution. And now people can say, okay, the, the Grammys is the spot that validates and certifies whether you're a real artist. Come to, If you're a real hip-hop artist, how many Grammys do you have? Nobody's ever counting how many Source Awards do you have. Nobody's counting how many Soul Train Awards do you have. How many Essence um, Awards do you have? Y'all are just looking at it. All we do is continually validate their institutions, and that's why their institutions stay on top. Build something from the ground up. Stay independent. Stay and work from scratch. You guys don't want to do that. And I got people mad at me in a blog because I talked about Killer Mike for five minutes, and people want to talk about, well, where's, you, you need to talk about more in depth. Well, what did Killer Mike, you, you, you didn't mention enough about Killer Mike's, um, history and he, his political view. I don't need to mention anything about Killer Mike's political views. If you watch Killer Mike enough online, and if you watch Killer Mike enough on um, on television and interviews that he's done, you'll see that Killer Mike is, um, you'll see what his political views are and you'll see where he is. So that's why I'm trying to figure out like, why are you coming at me? Because Killer Mike is the one that claims to be, or I shouldn't say he claims to be, but Killer Mike is voiced his opinion on black people. He he has shown to be a very intelligent dude when it comes to black issues and uh, and even socioeconomic issues, but will turn around and get in front of Bill Maher and then start cooning. And that's that's the one thing that I don't understand. And then also, too, want to get up there and start talking about the Grammys, and then you don't even mention the history of the Grammys and the hip-hop. When Killer Mike, you was a part of that history. I know you were. So no one wants to badmouth the Grammys, and all we want to do is validate the Grammys? We want to validate their awards, and by us showing up? That's the same thing people do. We always validate white people in white spaces. We invite them into our space and we validate them. We validated Kim Kardashian because once you link yourself to a black man, then you have more access than regular. Kim Kardashian has more street credibility than a lot of y'all regular black people that's online defending these people. It's true. These white people hang out and they hang in more black spaces like Lear Cohen or what a liar, Lear Cohen, whatever his name is, has more street credibility and black credibility than a lot of you, including my, myself included. These black people will defend Liar Cohen before they defend your black ass. But then in the next breath, two weeks later, be wondering why can't black people ever unify and uplift each other? Because we don't do that. When have you, you, you got Taraji complaining. And I understand, and understandably so. And I'm not talking bad about Taraji, but you got Taraji complaining. But the bottom line is this: you have the the perfect people. You have Byron Allen, you have um, Oprah Winfrey, you have Tyler Perry, you have a lot of. You have even Magic Johnson has a net, network. You have Kathy Hughes has her own network with TV One. Why can't all of these people get together? pool their money and form one big company that's equivalent to Metro Goldwyn Mayer and put out their own content. We, this should not be a reason why we have to run back to any white institution for anything. But because black people feel so dependent on white on the white man and we are validated by what we do in white spaces, once again, 
a, a black person makes a movie, the only thing they want to say is, did I win an Oscar? And if they don't win an Oscar, that's the whole talk of the town. Did they win an Oscar? Why didn't they win an Oscar? What can they do better next time to win an Oscar? Why are you trying to please the white man? Did, all you should be worried about is, was my movie profitable? Did we make a profit? Can we carry this international? And how well did it do internationally? If we made a profit, then we can continue to crank these movies out. That's the only thing you should be caring about. You shouldn't care about whether the Oscars validate you or not. Make your own Oscars. And this is one of the things, and like I said too, and I've said this before in some other videos, like, or, I may, or maybe I haven't, but I, one thing I will say is this. I've I've never really been a fan of Dame Dash. Never been a fan of Dame Dash when he was on the music scene. But when Dame Dash talks about entrepreneurship and business ownership, Dame Dash is probably one of the smartest people you'll ever talk to. And I know a lot of y'all going to bash me and say, yes, see, he aligned himself with Dame Dash, so that goes to show you what type of idiot he is. But Dame Dash speaks nothing but the truth. He's about self-reliance and building his own stuff. And we can't stick together enough to build our own stuff. And so I'm just trying to figure out why you guys are so mad about me bashing Killer Mike for five, 20 minutes of TV time that he had with Bill Maher. Honestly, I, I'm trying to figure that out. Totally confused. But this is a political brown kid. I'm not going to kiss all his ass over what I said about um, Killer Mike or Michael Render, whatever he wants to call himself. But um, I stand by everything that I said. And if you really want to know my views, because some of y'all are so short minded and asking questions, but obviously y'all haven't paid attention to my channel, then you need to go back into my archives and watch my, my channel and watch every single video, not just the ones about Killer Mike or NWA or Sexy Red and stop paying attention to those videos and pay attention to the ones that I really talk about real substances stuff. So once again, this is the political brown kid. I'm out.